Today we will be learning about the principles of tooth preparation. Before we go into the details of how tooth preparation is done, it is necessary for us to know certain characteristics and features that are incorporated into a preparation. Now, for proper tooth preparation, there are some basic principles. These are preservation of tooth structure, retention and resistance, structural durability, marginal integrity and preservation of periodontium. Let's discuss them one by one. The first one is the preservation of tooth. During tooth preparation, care should be taken to prevent excessive removal of tooth structure. There should be as minimal as possible reduction done to obtain the required characteristics because excessive removal of tooth structure has many adverse effects. If a tooth is over tapered or shortened too much, there will be an unnecessary sacrifice of retention and resistance. Grossly decayed teeth should be retained with the help of dowel cores, cast posts, onlays, etc. Next is retention and resistance form. Retention is defined as the ability of the preparation to prevent displacement of the restoration in a direction opposite to the path of insertion and resistance is defined as the ability of the prosthesis to resist displacement by forces directed in an apical or oblique direction. Retention and resistance are reciprocating to one another. Retention is further divided into primary retention and secondary retention. Primary retention is further divided into sleeve retention which is retention by opposing vertical surfaces and wedge retention which is seen in intracoronal restorations. On the other hand, secondary retention is obtained by retentive features such as retentive pins, grooves and boxes. To get the proper resistance and retention forms, there are certain features in preparation that should be considered. These are taper, freedom of displacement, length, the path of insertion and the substitution of internal features. We'll discuss it one by one. The degree of taper is inversely proportional to the retention form. Zero degree taper is the most retentive but it is almost impossible to obtain. Some of the degree of taper is known as the degree of convergence. So, the optimum retention is 4 to 10 degrees of convergence. Anterior teeth should have a minimum of 10 degree taper and the posteriors should have a maximum of 22 degrees taper. A tapering fissure diamond burr is ideal to produce a taper. Limiting the freedom of displacement from talking and twisting forces helps to increase the resistance. In other words, less movement means better resistance. A single path of insertion is best for retention. There will be a loss of retention in over tapered restoration because in such cases there are multiple paths of removal. So the greater the taper, lesser the retention. Greater the height of the crown, the better the retention. Length of the crown improves retention in two ways. Firstly, the height of the prepared tooth should be greater than the tipping arc of displacement to prevent displacement. And secondly, an increase in height increases the area of cementation. Now, what is path of insertion? It is an imaginary line along which the restoration will be placed onto or removed from the tooth preparation. It should be accurately determined using a surveyor and intraorally the preparation can be evaluated by using a mouth mirror. A facial path of insertion is avoided as it produces a prominent unesthetic cervical margin and the mesiodistal inclination should be parallel to the proximal inclinations of adjacent teeth. Substitution of internal features is obtained by proximal grooves, boxes and retention pinholes that can be incorporated to improve retention. These are mainly indicated in over tapered preparations, partial veneer crowns and in absence of two opposite walls. This is all about retention and resistance form. Next is structural durability. It is the ability of the restoration to withstand destruction due to external forces. This durability comes with the thickness of the restoration. It is obvious that to obtain the adequate thickness of restoration, adequate reduction of tooth is required, right? The amount of reduction depends on the type of restorative material and the design of the restoration. So, 
Now we have a basic idea about structural durability. Let's start with features of structural durability. The first one is occlusal reduction. Occlusal strength is most important as most of the forces act directly on the occlusal surface. Inadequate clearance may lead to a weaker restoration that is prone to fracture. Let's have a look at the amount of occlusal reduction required for commonly used materials. For gold alloys, 1.5 mm clearance for functional and 1 mm for non-functional cusps is needed. For metal ceramic, 1.5 to 2 mm for functional cusps and 1 to 1.5 mm for non-functional cusps is needed. And for all ceramics, 2 mm reduction throughout is required. Next is the functional cusp bevel. It is given to increase the thin occlusoaxial junction of the restoration and in cases where additional thickness is required as the functional cusp undergoes maximum masticatory load. It is prepared on the palatal cusp for maxillary and buccal cusp for mandibular teeth. Lastly, adequate axial reduction is required for structural durability. Inadequate reduction may lead to an overcontoured proximal surface. Axial reduction is done such that it aligns the abutments parallel to one another. Over reduction should not be done as it may lead to loss of retention. This was all about structural durability. The next principle is marginal integrity. Marginal adaptation and seating of restoration affects marginal integrity. Poor marginal adaptation leads to marginal leakage and secondary caries. Casting shrinkage may lead to marginal discrepancy. The most accepted discrepancy is around 10 microns. The margin should be placed supragingivally because it is easily finished, easy to maintain, easy to identify and reproduced during impression making. It is also easy to examine during future visits. On the other hand, in some cases, subgingival margins may be essential for certain restorations, such as teeth with short clinical crowns, in the presence of subgingival caries, cervical erosion, and where aesthetics is the primary concern or additional retention is needed, and in case of metal ceramic margins. So, how to get proper margins? To get a proper margin, the finish line should have certain characteristics. But first, we need to know what a finish line is. It is the final margin that separates the prepared and the unprepared tooth structure. Now, let's see how it should be. Shallow bevels parallel to cavo surface margin should be avoided. There should be increased angulation of the bevel. The bevel should not make an acute angle at margins and during finish line preparation and the tooth should not be reduced greater than half of the width of its dimension. There are different finish line configurations. These are divided into chamfer, heavy chamfer, shoulder, shoulder with bevel and knife edge. Let us see each one in detail. The first is chamfer. This is made by a curved slope from the axial wall to the margin. It is made by torpedo diamond point. This finish line is used for cast metal restorations. They have less stress and a good success rate. Heavy chamfer is used to provide a 90 degree cavo surface margin. Improper reduction will produce an undesirable fragile piece of enamel. A bevel can be added to the heavy chamfer for cast metal preparations. Next is shoulder. This is made by a gingival finish wall perpendicular to the axial surfaces. It is used for all ceramic restorations and in anterior restorations where aesthetics is a prime concern. The wide ledge gives resistance and requires more tooth reduction. Now, next is shoulder with a bevel. This type is similar to the shoulder but the only difference is that an external bevel is created on the gingival margin. These are used on the proximal box of inlays and onlays and can be used as a facial finish line for metal ceramic restorations. Advantages of this margin are that it aids in contouring the restoration, improves burnish ability, minimizes marginal discrepancy, and prevents chipping off of unsupported enamel. Next is knife edge. It requires extremely thin preparation and is difficult to wax up and cast, difficult to produce a smooth margin, and susceptible to distortion. 
It is indicated in the lingual surface of mandibular posteriors, very convex axial surfaces, and undercuts and tipped teeth. Now, the last one is feather edge preparation. It is similar to a knife edge preparation but is marginally thinner. It is the most conservative type of finishing line since the least amount of tooth structure is removed. But the margin is weak since this margin design does not provide enough bulk or thickness for the restorative material. Now, the last principle of tooth preparation is the preservation of periodontium. It has a direct bearing on the ease of fabrication and the ultimate success of the restoration. The best results can be expected from margins that are as smooth as possible and are fully exposed to cleansing action. Subgingival finish line predisposes to periodontitis. The distance between the finish line and the alveolar crest must be 2 mm. If decreased, it may lead to gingival inflammation, loss of alveolar crest and pocket formation. So, this was all about the basic principles of tooth preparation. The basic principles of tooth preparation are broadly classified under three headings. Biological considerations, mechanical considerations and aesthetic considerations. Let's see what is meant by biological considerations. We should try to conserve the tooth structure as much as possible. We should avoid over contouring of the margins and the margins should be limited supragingivally. There should be harmonious occlusion. Great care is also needed to prevent pulp injuries during fixed prosthodontic procedures, especially complete crown procedures. Next is mechanical considerations, which include the retention and resistance form. It should not undergo structural changes under occlusal forces. Aesthetic considerations are that there should be a minimum display of metal. Adequate thickness of porcelain should be maintained and the margins should be placed subgingivally. That's all for this video. Let us recap quickly. Basic principles of tooth preparation are preservation of tooth structure, retention, resistance, structural durability, marginal integrity, and preservation of the periodontium. For the preservation of tooth structure, reduction that is as minimal as possible should be done to obtain the required characteristics. To get the proper resistance and retention forms, certain features should be considered in our preparation. These are taper, freedom of displacement, length, the path of insertion, and the substitution of internal features. Structural durability comes with the thickness of the restoration. Functional cusp is prepared on the palatal cusp for maxillary teeth and buccal cusp for mandibular teeth. The marginal integrity is maintained by making a proper finish line. There are different types of finish lines like chamfer, heavy chamfer, shoulder, shoulder with bevel and knife edge. These principles of tooth preparation are broadly classified under three headings, biological considerations, mechanical considerations and aesthetic considerations.